Throughout the years, I have opened a lot of expensive product on my channel. As many of you know, opening sealed product, especially old product, is rarely profitable. I often lose money, and sometimes I lose a lot of money. In today's video, I will be taking you through my top 10 biggest losses on the channel. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Before we get into it, I'm going to be giving away these two Dark Magician Girl cards. All you have to do is like this video, be subscribed, turn on notifications, and let me know if there's anything I missed in the top 10, and let me know what's going to be on the top 10 list. Let's get into it. At number 10, we have my every 2002 10 opening that I did where I opened every single 10 from 2002 in one single video. These 10s cost me around $2,500, I think. I'm not totally sure on some of these prices because if I put it on like the thumbnail, then it's really easy to remember, but sometimes I can't remember exactly. This could have been 2,200, but I think it was 2,500. I actually did pretty well in this video and pulled some awesome stuff, but the problem with old 10s is they didn't put first edition packs in the 10s. So even when I got an awesome pull, it was an unlimited version, which doesn't really get you that much money back. So I pulled like even a blue eyes white dragon and stuff like that in that video. And like the stuff was only worth like $100 max. So we actually pulled a lot of good stuff, but it ended up only being around like $500 in terms of the pulls. I was also able to sell the tins for like a hundred bucks or something like that. And then I also sold all the commons and rares to my friend Gezi TCG for like $300. So your overall, it's like, wow, that's kind of a lot of money. I made almost a thousand dollars back, but even after all of that, I still lost $1,510.23. This was about 60% of the money that I paid, which honestly is pretty bad, but compared to the other ones on this list, it was actually pretty good. At number nine, we have another 10 opening where I opened every 2004 10 in a single video. I actually paid nearly as much for these at $2,400 because I did this one later than the 2002 10 and like all the 10s got more expensive and stuff like that, but we pulled a lot worse. I only pulled like $173 worth of value and then I sold the 10s for about 100 bucks as well again. And after all that, I lost about $2,126. <sighs> 89% of my money. That's a lot worse than 60. At number eight, we have the Strike of Neos booster box opening. Yes, this was a pretty epic opening because we opened one of the rarest hobby boxes from GX. When you open a GX box, you kind of have to accept that it's going to be a rough time. Even if you pull like the very best card, you still have to grade it in a PSA 10 to actually make your money back. So even if I had theoretically pulled the Air Neos and graded it like a nine, I still would have lost money on this. I even pulled some awesome stuff like Dark World Dealings Ultimate Rare. I also pulled the Neospatian Air Hummingbird, two ultimates in one box, which is awesome, and a secret rare, and we still lost a ton of money. I spent $2,500 on this box because the guy was a fan and he actually gave me a good deal, so not even a bad price, and I only made $346.96 back. That's $2,153 we lost. 86% of our money. Hey, that's actually better than number nine in terms of percentages, but a little bit more, about 27 more dollars worse. At number seven, we have another time where I opened every 10 in a specific year, and it was the 2003 10s. If you've been around for a while or if you've seen a lot of my videos, you've probably seen this video. We started like 0 for 21 on the foils. We pulled zero foils for 21 packs out of 30. Then we pulled like a super rare or something worth a couple bucks, and then the final pack, we pulled the blue eyes white dragon. So this was an epic pull, but this opening was so, so bad that like even that like $95 pull, yeah, an unlimited blowies is only 95 bucks at the time. So first edition would obviously have like well made our money back, but another problem with the 10s, they just have those unlimited packs and they don't make a lot of money back. I even was able to sell the 10s for about a hundred bucks again, and uh, still we only made about 200 bucks back. We lost $2,305 on this opening. That's 92% of our money. Fun opening, but yeah, the money was not there. At number six, we have our opening with Charlie when I went down to Tampa and opened some packs with him at his warehouse. These packs were worth about $3,000 and we literally pulled nothing. The only real foil decent pull that we pulled was Dark Ruler Hades and uh, that was worth about 22 bucks. We lost $2,978, probably a few extra cards worth a couple of bucks in there, but not really. It was a pretty bad opening. 99% of our money on that one. That was awesome. The experience was totally worth it, and I had a great time opening those packs, but it was pretty rough, and I hope that one day we can have a redemption arc, you know, go back, bring him some packs, and actually pull some really good cards, because that was just bad. Now we're on to the top five, and here's where it jumps up a lot. So we, last time we lost almost $3,000, this time we lose a lot more. This one is our Phantom Darkness first edition box opening, which a lot of you guys have not seen. It only had around 30 something thousand views. So if you guys have missed that one, go check it out. We actually had some pretty awesome pulls, including one of the best secret rares, the Dark Greffer. This is a first edition box that I got from a friend. He sold it to us for $4,500, which is actually not that bad for a box this rare. It's a pretty nice price, but even then, like we would have had to pull the Dark Arm Dragon graded to 10 and like maybe make our money back with that. I opened this one with Old School Expert at his house. It was a really fun opening. I really enjoyed doing it, but we only made $181 back. 
that's a $4,318 loss. Yeah, there's some decimals in there. So yeah, I know 10 minus one is, is nine, not eight, but 96% loss. So we didn't lose 99% of our money there, but $4,500 box, which actually is a pretty good price. We pulled really good actually, and still only got $181 back. So imagine pulling poorly out of the set. Now at number four, we have the one that I forgot to include the first time I recorded this when I wasn't actually recording my audio. Yeah, we're back. We have audio. You can hear me now. The Cybernetic Revolution Hobby Box Opening. I spent $4,650 on this box, so it was a very expensive box, but it's a GX box. You guys know what happens. You either pull really, really well, or you pull awful. I was hoping for that Cyber and Dragon, that Cyber Dragon, maybe a UFO Roid fight or something like that, but all I got was the UFO Roid and the BES Crystal Core. Yeah, pretty bad. All of our pulls, even including the Power Bond Ultra, which was like 130 bucks, only amounted to $212. We lost about $4,437 that day. It was really, really rough, and this was right before I recorded yet another opening, which is coming up soon. This was about 95% of our money and only like 19 more dollars than the Phantom Darkness. These are both in the same range in terms of losses, so both equally painful. At number three, we go to our 100,000 subscriber opening where we opened a full Retro Pack 2 display with eight of those mini boxes inside and wow were the pulls bad. We only pulled one Ultra Rare, which was a Mirror Wall, and Mirror Wall is usually a super out of Ferro Server, and it just kind of feels like a super. And then we pulled a bunch of other supers. No Secret Rares in the entire opening. And in Retro Pack 2, if you don't pull a Secret Rare, you are in big trouble, because there's not a lot of value in the Ultras. Like, Genzo is decently valued, but it's not really close to those Secret Rares. I decided to give the Commons and Rares, like, a $100 value, because they did have, like, $1 to $2 cards, like, a lot of those in there, but we still only pulled $209, including that $100. And did I mention I spent $6,500? $100 on that box? Yeah, that's a $6,290 loss. Woo! 97% of our money is gone. And FYI, I didn't include any graded costs or ad revenue or anything like that in here. Even with those included, we still lost a ton of money on all these videos, but just thought I'd mention that. Now we're on to the top two. These two are beasts of their own. Number two, LOB first edition box, our second box opening where we got it in California. We bought those cases with a bunch of different people and I got the one box, opened it up, got the crimp trihorn. I didn't include any sort of like misprint for the trihorn value. I just kind of included it as a PSA five value, but we did not pull well out of this box at all. We pulled a bunch of off-centered glossy hollows like the left leg for ultra rare, Guy of the Fierce Knight, which is probably the worst ultra rare in the box. Maybe like right leg is worse, but both pretty bad. By the way, if we did include grading, they all graded completely terrible. Terribly. I spent a ton of money at BGS. They got 8.5s and 9s, so I'm pretty sure I like broke even at the best on those. So I probably even lost more money grading with BGS on those. I even included the commons and rares to have over a $1,000 value because they are pretty valuable and can be graded like PSA 10s and stuff like that and be sold for a decent amount. So I gave them like a $1,200 value and we still only made $3,782 back out of a $17,800 cost. That means I lost over $14,000 on that opening. Yeah, it was horrible. It was so bad. We made back 21% of our money, so we lost 79%, which is actually high in terms of percentages. But when you spend that much more, like $17,000, nearly $18,000, this still is awful. It hurts so, so much. And finally, what could be worse than a $14,000 loss? You might've guessed it already in the comments. If you haven't yet, go put your guesses in. You got one last chance the first edition Magician's Force booster box opening. This booster box cost $15,500, and really, we pretty much had to pull Dark Magician Girl or Bust. Maybe if we pulled like Dark Paladin, that would have got back a lot of value, but I mean, even a PSA 10 of that at this point is two to 3,000, so it, it wouldn't have done it. I pulled two awful ultras, the Amazon of Swordswoman, which I actually like the card, but it's only worth around 30 bucks at the time of opening, and then Luster Dragon, which was also under $100. I didn't pull a single $100 card from this box and uh, it cost 15,000. Most of my money I made back was because Gezi TCG paid me $600 for all the commons and rares. That definitely helped because all the foils were $206. So $806 total dollars made back out of $15,500. That's $14,693 loss opening that booster box. That's only a 95% loss. Hey, I made back 5% of my money. Thanks Gezi for buying my comments. <laughs> Honestly, I don't regret a lot of my openings, but the Magician's Force Booster Box opening is one that I honestly would take back if I had another chance because it just wasn't worth it. The $14,693 loss was definitely not worth, you know, the video. It was a great video. It did fairly well. Just way too much of a loss. With LOB, I can at least be like, well, I could have pulled the Blue Eyes. With this, it's just like I could have pulled Dark Magician Girl, which is it's not on the same level as Blue Eyes in my opinion. And by the way, I opened this one the day after I opened Cybernetic Revolution and lost that $4,000 plus. So I lost about $20,000 
$20,000 in two days. Let me know in the comments which one you thought would be the worst. Like if you experienced it yourself, would Magician's Force be number one, like the worst loss for you? Or do you think it'd be another one because you were expecting something else? Or give me a reason in the comments if you don't agree, or if you think that one would be worse for you personally. And if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more epic content like this. Shout out to TCG, Trust Cards, Tomefo Show, Tomato Jews, Daxter, JT Cho, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto Deanda, Squirtle, Flexi Boy, Dizzy, Stanley, Mike Nance, Mimic Gecko, Ian Musa, Junior Barning, John Nolan, and Untie Show, Thomas McLean, and Seth Fisher. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.